Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, X. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with a sheriff arriving at a horrific crime scene in rural Texas in 1979. A corpse is covered up in the house front, and the front porch has blood splatter. As the sheriff enters the house, there are two more bodies by the front door, while the television displays the speech of a fundamentalist Christian preacher. Seconds later, the deputy calls his attention to see something particularly gruesome. As they go to the basement, the sheriff is left stunned. The scene then goes back to one day earlier, where an aspiring starlet, Maxine, leaves with her boyfriend, who's an executive producer. Along with them are the rest of the crew, the director, the sound operator nicknamed Church Mouse, who is also the director's girlfriend, and the main actor couple, Playboy and Blonde. They drive down to Houston to shoot a porno film entitled The Farmer's Daughter. The crew soon arrives at a farmhouse, where they plan to shoot the movie. The producer goes to talk to the elderly owner, a war veteran named Landlord, who greets him with a rifle. The producer calmly reminds Landlord that they are coming here to rent his place, as they have discussed the other night. Landlord puts down his shotgun, saying that he uses it to scare trespassers, but it's not loaded. While Maxine exits the van, she notices Landlord's wife, Pearl, watching her from the window. Landlord then takes the crew to his boarding house. There, Landlord rudely makes it clear that he dislikes or distrusts any of them. The shooting soon starts with Playboy and Blonde having a passionate hormone exchange. Meanwhile, Maxine goes for a smoke wearing only a jumper when she discovers a lake near the boarding house. She goes for a swim in the peaceful scenery, unaware that Pearl is hiding afar behind the trees, watching her swim naked. On the other hand, the producer and the director argue, because the director wants to make an adult film wherein the viewers will see the actor's passion. However, the producer points out that people await these kinds of movies, so he just continues what he does, and they will soon be rich. Simultaneously, Church Mouse watches Playboy and Blonde in silence as they argue who's the better actor. Back to Maxine, she indulges the peacefulness as she floats, unaware that a deadly alligator is in the water with her, waiting for the chance to eat her smelly oyster. After a while, she slowly swims back to the dock, still oblivious that the alligator is now following her. The animal is just a meter away when Maxine moves onto the dock, unknowingly dodging her death. On the other hand, Playboy and Blonde shoot the film's premise, with his car breaking down and coming upon Blonde's house. Playboy asks for a phone to call for help, but Blonde informs him that they don't have a telephone. She then offers him to come inside and wait for her daddy, who may give him a lift to town. Meanwhile, Maxine returns to the boarding house, when she notices Pearl waving at her from her front porch. Although confused, Maxine goes inside their home. In the kitchen, Pearl offers her a glass of lemonade. After drinking the whole, Maxine excuses herself to leave, so Pearl walks with her. At this time, Blonde seductively approaches Playboy and instructs him to follow her before her daddy returns home. The next shoot shows Playboy and Blonde wrestling their muscles on bed. Meanwhile, Maxine stares into the wall photographs as Pearl shares how her husband survived the war and how he would do anything for her back then. She was once a dancer but had to stop when the war came. Pearl then instructs Maxine to look at her gorgeous face in the mirror, which she reluctantly does. However, she quickly distances herself from Pearl after feeling her hands on her body. Just then, Landlord arrives in his vehicle. Pearl immediately instructs her to leave and tells her what happened there will be their secret. Maxine exits the home and runs back to the boarding house, while Landlord enters using another door. She quickly locks herself in a room, staring at the mirror and telling herself that she will not accept a life that she does not deserve. Landlord finds the two glasses of lemonade and quickly realizes Pearl has had a visitor. Back to the crew, they enter the barn and shoot the next scene, where Maxine plays Blonde's younger sister. Playboy tells her about his car and how he needs their daddy to get a ride to town before dark. Maxine replies that disturbing their daddy will not be such a good idea, so she suggests giving Playboy a ride instead. The next scene shows Maxine moaning as she grinds on top of Playboy's thing. Unbeknownst to the crew, Pearl is outside, aroused as she watches the scene from the window. After watching them, Pearl returns home and tells her husband to make out with her. However, he declines since his heart's weak and might not take the speed and power. Later that night, Blonde compliments Maxine for acting. She adds that she knows why the producer left his wife for Maxine. Church Mouse then brings up the idea of watching each other's partner doing it with other people. The producer answers it's just sex, as long as the camera is running. But after that, they still want to be with their partners. The other crew adds on, saying it's bad keeping arousal to yourself, and everyone likes sex, because one day, all will be too old to do it. 
Hearing this, Church Mouth suggests the unexpected proposal that shocks everyone. She wants to do a scene in the film, which the director immediately refuses because she's his girlfriend. Church Mouse rebuts that she doesn't want to carry the equipment anymore and wants to be in the good dirty movie they're making. The director still refuses and tells her they cannot change the movie plot midway through. However, Church Mouse replies that nobody wants to pay to see the movie just for the boring plot. They're paying to see the actors' hormone-filled bodies. Still, the director clarifies that he's making a film better than porn, which pisses Church Mouse even more because he forbids her to do what she wants. The producer meddles before the two. He talks to the director outside and reasons that Church Mouse seems serious about wanting to do a scene in the movie, so why doesn't he give her a chance? Pissed, the director clarifies that Church Mouse isn't a girl like Blonde or Maxine. She's special because she's good, but the producer rebuts that none of them are nice. As they enter the boarding house, the producer hands the camera to the director, who still cannot believe his eyes. Maxine and Blonde finish preparing Church Mouse, who removes Playboy's waist towel to start the next scene. Later that night, while everyone's asleep, the director decides to leave the crew, frustrated with the change in the script and his girlfriend. The director storms off to the van to leave them stranded, but stops when he sees Pearl blocking the road. He attempts to help Pearl back into their home, but she remains unresponsive before hugging him. She caresses his back and moans into his ears, before trying to tongue massage him. But the director pushes her dying ass away. Pearl suddenly stabs him in the neck. He tries to stop the bleeding and calls for help, but Pearl sits on top of him and repeatedly pierces the knife in his body, spraying the headlights with his blood. After this, the crazy old woman dances into the wind, reminiscing about her youth and passion for dance. On the other hand, Church Mouse wakes up and realizes that the director is not in bed. She searches for him around the boarding house and even checks the outside, but he's not there. The producer shocks Church Mouse by tapping her shoulder, but she dismisses that and tells him about the director missing. She cannot hide her guilt and worry, as she thinks that the director might have left her after she suggested doing a scene in the movie. The producer calms her down and comes with her to look for the director. He checks the barn, while Church Mouse goes to the elderly's home. He doesn't even bother wearing pants and searches for the director with only his underwear. The producer then steps onto a nail, wounding his right foot. While enduring the pain, he sees shadows pass by, so he checks them through the holes. However, someone blocks his view. The next thing he knows, a long nail pierces his brain through his eye. Just then, Landlord comes out, looking for his horny wife. He asks for Church Mouse's help and asks her to get the other flashlight down the cellar. He begs Church Mouse, as he's worried that his wife might fall and break her hip in the dark. Church Mouse reluctantly obliges and immediately finds the other flashlight. On the other hand, Pearl enters the barn holding a pitchfork, which she uses to stab a now-dead producer. Back to Church Mouse, she quickly climbs the stairs after finding the flashlight, only to discover that Landlord has locked the door from the outside. She calls Landlord's attention to free her, but receives no response. So she returns to the basement to look for an exit, when she accidentally discovers an unknown man naked, wounded, dead, and almost rotting from the ceiling. Meanwhile, Playboy and Blonde wake up after hearing the door creaking. Playboy checks it out, while Blonde returns to sleep. He sees Landlord outside, looking for his old wife. So Playboy changes his clothes and goes outside to search with Landlord, unaware that someone is in the boarding house. It's Pearl sneaking into Maxine's room. The creepy and crazy old lady removes her clothes before getting onto the bed to touch Maxine. Meanwhile, Landlord informs Playboy that they have to part ways for the search. They then part ways before entering the woods to search for Pearl. On the other hand, Pearl caresses Maxine's body with her bloody hands, leaving blood marks on her skin. Back to Playboy, he finds a vintage car in the middle of the pond, causing him to have suspicions about the elderly couple. He then searches for Landlord, who suddenly appears in front of him. Landlord stares at him angrily and tells him that the last boarders at his house are acting the same way, who walked around without any clothes, enticing his old wife. Playboy tries to dismiss what he said, but then Landlord stares at him before pulling the trigger of his shotgun. Meanwhile, Maxine soon wakes up, only to find Pearl in the bed with her. Maxine's loud screams wake up Blonde, who immediately gets up to help her. As she opens the door, Pearl shocks her with her presence and nakedness. Pearl walks away like it is nothing, while Blonde runs to Maxine, who yells how Pearl was touching her in her sleep. In the basement, Church Mouse finds a small axe, which she uses to destroy the door, creating enough space for her to reach the doorknob. However, Landlord returns home and breaks her hand with his shotgun butt. She tries to call for help, but he points his weaponry at her and threatens her to stay in the cellar and be quiet. She can only cry in helplessness, while Landlord turns on the TV to overpower her annoying cries. Maxine goes to the bathroom, while Blonde goes outside looking for Playboy. 
She ends up finding Pearl standing at the dock's edge, naked. Blonde immediately runs to her, worried she might slip and fall. Blonde covers Pearl with her blanket before trying to help her return to her house. However, Pearl replies to her kindness with a slap and insults her. Offended, Blonde tries to leave her, but Pearl blocks her way. After that, she pushes Blonde into the water. Just then, the alligator grabs Blonde's sexy body, and soon the water turns crimson red with her blood. As Pearl watches Blonde gets killed, Landlord arrives to take her back to their home. Meanwhile, after cleaning the bloody marks on her body, Maxine looks for her friends when the old couple enter the house. They enter Maxine's room, hoping she'd be there, but she isn't. They sit on the bed and talk about their sex life and how they have not been intimate for a while. Landlord tells his wife that since he met her, he knew she was special, and despite being old, she's still beautiful as always. So Pearl grabs his hands and asks him to make her feel young again by making love to her. She convinces him that his weak heart can make it. As the elderly couple starts their smelly workout, Maxine is underneath the bed, listening to everything. She silently gets out, enduring Pearl's encouragement to her husband to punish her dying but still horny body harder. As soon as she's out of the room, Maxine runs outside the van to escape when she discovers the director's mutilated body. Just then, she hears Church Mouse's screams for help. She immediately enters the elderly couple's home and finds Church Mouse. She instructs Church Mouse to keep her voice down while she successfully unlocks the door. Maxine tells her they need to find the keys to the old couple's truck, but Church Mouse refuses to listen and goes to the door. As soon as she exits the house, Landlord pulls the trigger on her. Maxine promptly hides as the elderly couple brings in Church Mouse's body. However, her body moves a little, shocking Landlord and causing him to have a heart attack. As Pearl holds her husband, Maxine comes out of her hiding spot and points a pistol at Pearl. She asks her about the truck keys, so Pearl tells her it's in the kitchen. Maxine takes it before returning to the front, where Pearl insults her. Pearl tells her they're both the same whores, and Maxine will end up like her. Maxine refuses and replies that she's a star, and the world will soon know her name. Maxine says, I will not accept a life I do not deserve. The same line is said by the fundamentalist church priest. She then pulls the trigger, but no bullets come out, so Pearl grabs the shotgun and shoots. Maxine dodges the bullet, while Pearl gets thrown outside because of the impact. Maxine exits the home and stares at Pearl, who broke her hip and is calling for help. She then signals Pearl to be silent, before entering the truck and running over Pearl's head, ending her dying life. As the morning comes, the television keeps playing, revealing that the man's been searching for Maxine, his daughter. The film ends with the police arriving at the horrific crime scene, and one of the officers finds the camera used to film the porno movie. When the officer asks the sheriff what he thinks is on it, he replies that it might be a twisted horror movie made by Daniel CC Movie Channel. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.